This week, I'll show you how to set up a photo booth. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. This episode is brought to you by Adorama. Have you heard? Adorama is more than a camera store. Get more info at Adorama.com. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Wallace and you're watching Adorama TV. Well today, I'm going to show you how to do something really cool. Now this idea came out of two things really. One, my birthday is coming up and I want to have a big party and invite a bunch of my friends. And secondly, I was at Photo Plus a few months ago and I was at a different party at Peter Hurley's studio. It was an awesome party that he threw with the F-Stoppers. And at that party they had a photo booth and it was really awesome and really fancy and we had a lot of fun and I thought, man, I'd love to have a photo booth at my birthday party. And so I decided, hey, let's see if I can build one and I want to do it in such a way that I could show you how to do it and it's low cost, easy to do and really easy for your uh, party goers to just have fun and hop in and get their pictures taken and then I'm going to take that and kick it up a notch and show you how you can uh, add a computer and maybe a video projector or something that you can actually show all these pictures and it'll be great for events and parties that are a little bit bigger than just a birthday party but we need to get started and to start let me show you the ingredients of my little photo booth here. Now remember I wanted to do this in a way that's really portable, it's inexpensive and just a lot of fun and not a lot of hassle. So uh, to start with you need a camera and it could be pretty much any kind of camera. I'm using a Nikon D3S here but this could be a Rebel, a digital Rebel, Canon Rebel. It could be a 5D Mark II, a 5D Mark III, it could be a D7000. It doesn't really matter. The key thing is you just have to have some kind of camera and you need to have a lens that's a wide angle lens. Now I'm using a 24 to 70 millimeter lens and I have put this on 24 millimeters so it's the widest uh, that this lens gets. And so if you have a wide angle lens, maybe a 24 or an 11 or something really, really wide, that's the key. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, hey Mark, you have told us in the past not to use wide angle lenses when you're shooting portraits. And that's true, but this is an exception. We're going to have a lot of fun and that wide angle lens is going to be really key to getting everything to work. And I'll show you in a little bit why that's the case. So make sure you have a wide angle lens on your camera. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to be able to illuminate our photo booth. We need to have some kind of light. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use a normal speed light. And I'm not going to use any kind of remote off-camera stuff. We're just going to put it right on the camera and I'll show you how you can bounce that light. And so just about any flash will work. And uh, one of the things that you'll notice is if a lot of people are getting their pictures taken, you'll probably need to have a set of batteries to replace those every once in a while, or maybe have an external battery pack. Or if you're an advanced user, you could maybe add two or three speed lights and have this one as the uh, master and those others as the remotes. And so you can do that as well. But anyway, you just have to have some kind of flash on your camera. And for this to work, what we're going to do is we're going to take the flash and we're going to turn it backwards. So we're going to have it facing away from the front of our camera and uh, then you just turn it on and leave it in full auto mode. Just total full auto mode. Now as far as the camera goes, we're going to turn the camera on and we're going to put our camera in manual mode. Now I know that seems a little bit odd, but we need to have our camera in manual mode because we want to control the shutter speed and the aperture value and because we have an external flash or the speed light on here, the flash is actually going to figure out the right exposure and so it's all going to work out. Even if you don't know how to shoot in manual mode, this will work. So my camera is set to a shutter speed of 200. That's going to make sure that we don't have a really slow shutter speed, which could happen. And then I'm going to put my aperture value to f8. Now why f8? I'm using f8 to make sure I have enough uh, in focus so my depth of field really covers everybody in the shot because you might have somebody really close to the camera, somebody far away. We want to make sure everything's in focus. So manual mode at a 200th of a second at f8 and then my ISO, I'm setting my ISO to an ISO of 400. Now you might want to kick that up a little bit if you have a camera like this one that can uh, really take pictures at higher ISOs. But I'm keeping my ISO high so my flash doesn't have to work so hard. So ISO of 400, shutter speed of 200, and aperture value of f8. All in manual mode, my flash in full auto. All right, now we have that all set up, we're almost ready to go, but the secret ingredient to the photo booth that I'm going to be using are these. These are the Pocket Wizard Plus 3s. Now these things are awesome because they will allow you not only to remotely trigger your camera, but they also will allow you to focus. And what you can do with these little guys is they have this really neat feature and it's this test button. Now the other Pocket Wizards, Pocket Wizard Plus 2 or the Mini Inflex, the original, uh, 
um, pocket wizards, they'll work, but they don't have this feature, which is when you push the test button halfway, it tells the camera to focus. It's just like pushing your shutter release halfway. And then when you push it all the way, it'll tell the camera to fire. And so if you have people that aren't photographers, all you have to do is tell them to push the test button and hold it. The camera will focus and then it will take a picture. So then all those pictures are going to be in focus. Everybody's going to have a good time. And it can't be really much easier. You just give people this little remote, tell them to push the, the test button and a picture will happen. Now this is what we're going to have people hold in their hands and trigger that photo booth. The other side of this is another Pocket Wizard Plus 3. And to make this work with your camera, what you need is something that's called a remote cable. And that's what I have right here. Sometimes these are called ACC cables. And what these do is these attach to the camera between the camera and the Pocket Wizard Plus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on my camera right here. And then the other guy is going to go right into my Plus 3. Now again, if you have a different kind of Pocket Wizard, a Plus 2 or a Mini or Flex, you could still do this. Um, it's just not as simple. You have to, again, get the remote cable. You won't have that remote focusing feature. It'll just fire the camera and it'll work. Now, the interesting thing about these remote cables is they are different for different cameras. So the one that works here on my uh, Nikon D3S isn't going to work on my Canon 1DS Mark II. It's not going to work on my D7000. It's not going to work on different cameras. So these are specific to your camera. And so you'll need to find the exact one that works with your camera. Now, the best way to do that is just to call the great folks at Adorama. You can call them up, and they will walk you through and figure out which cable you need. You can call them at 1-800-223-2500. So just call the guys at Adorama, and they will help you figure out which cable you need. Um, or you can just go to the Adorama website, and there is a list of all the different cables, and it will tell you which ones are uh, most uh, the one that's compatible with your camera. And so that's how that works out. So I've got my camera, I've got my flash, I've got my plus three here all hooked up. I've got re my remote cable. I've got this little tether here, this little uh, lanyard, so it just sort of hangs on that. And now what happens is when I push my test button on this, it will actually focus and fire. And now I have a picture of my hand if I wanted to do that. But that's how it works. You just sort of push this and it goes. Now let's build the actual photo booth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have people um, right here on this red background. So this red background is just a background support stand. And then uh, I have my roll of paper. And I'm using red because I want something a little festive. And I'm just attached to that. You can use whatever you want. This could be a wall. It could be anything. The thing that to note is uh, make sure you don't choose something that's white. And the reason for that is white's going to throw the auto exposure off from your flash, and you might run into problems. So I'm choosing red. You might choose gray, or you might choose something else, blue or green or something. But just don't choose white. White's not a good choice. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll this table away. And we are going to build, and I'll make sure I'm in front of the camera. We're going to build this out. So what we need is we need some way for this flash to bounce and hit everybody who's over here. So everybody's going to be over here having lots of fun. And so what we need to do is have something that bounces this flash. Now, we could use an umbrella or something like that, but there's a much simpler solution, and that is this. These little guys here, this is called a bookend, and it is made from a 4 by 8 sheet of foam core board. And these are really inexpensive. You can get them at a local art store, or you can get them in packs of 12 from Adorama. So Adorama will ship you a big pack of these if you're going to be using them a lot. You just take two of those, and then you tape them together. So this is just gaffer's tape right here. And I've just taped that together, and it looks like the other one's falling over. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to open it up, and let's put this right behind here. OK, so we have that. And that is going to allow this flash to bounce. We want that nice and close, so right there, so it's going to bounce. And then we'll open this other side up. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side, and we'll have this little cove. And then what happens is when the flash fires, it actually bounces off these white panels. And everybody's going to be standing back here having a good time. And that is the photo booth. So let me build the other side, and then we'll show you a new uh, point of view and show you how you can take this up a notch using Lightroom to really make your party uh, stand out. And if you're doing a corporate event, it will make that corporate event a smash. All right, well, the photo booth is built. I want to have some fun, but you can't see anything from here. All you can see is that we have this sort of 
box, or what you might call a booth. Now, if I was doing a party, I might decorate this and say photo booth and lots of pictures and really fun things like there. Uh, so if you're crafty, go ahead and do that. But what we need to do is look inside. So Matt is gonna go with me. So Matt, come on, let's go inside the photo booth. Now, what you'll see here is we have just this really narrow kind of opening. It's sort of like a fort inside here, which is exactly what we want. We can come inside and you can see that it is a booth that's large enough that you could put maybe one, two, three, or four, even maybe five people. And because we have our wide angle lens, we can get away with that. So I'm six feet tall. I'm way back here and I'm gonna be like, hey, what's up? And I get a picture or I could come really close and be like, hey. And I get a close picture there. And you can see that both of them work because our autofocus system is working and we have this wide angle lens, which is really forgiving and it's really awesome. So Matt, come on in, we'll show you. We can even have two people on this. So Matt, let's go like this. Hey, what's up? And you can see how much fun it is. It's just a lot of fun. And so uh, you can see there's a picture of Matt. Now there is a problem with this and that is, hey, what if I wanna see those pictures? Well, right now, the only way I could see those pictures is to come behind the camera and take a look. But um, if you're having any kind of party, if you have kids, that kind of stuff, somebody's gonna kick this tripod and that is not gonna be so good. So what we want to do is figure out a way that we can show the world the pictures that are being taken real time. Now there are two things you can do. One, if you have an HDMI supported camera, you might be able to put it to a big screen or a video projector. But what I prefer to do is use Lightroom and Tethered Captured. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a laptop outside I'm gonna throw a, a Tether Tools cable onto here, so I'll just plug that in. And then as people are taking pictures and being like, what up? Um, those pictures will show up on the computer and uh, we'll show you how to take it up a notch. Let's do that right now. Well, Matt and I have been taking a bunch of funny pictures back there in the photo booth, and that's all a lot of fun, but what we really need to do if we were at a party or an event is show other people those photos. And so what I've done is I've used my Tether Pro cable here from Tether Tools. You can buy these, by the way, at Adorama. They're great, they're orange, they're high visibility, so I use these all the time. So that's connected to my camera. I'm tethered to my laptop. And so what that means is now, every time I take a picture, it'll come right into Lightroom, and I've done a bunch of automated stuff in Lightroom to really make this a lot of fun. So Matt, go back there, and what I've done is I still have my uh, remote here. So I'm gonna have Matt smile and give me a peace sign. So Matt, smile, here we go. And I just took a picture, and we will see that that's just gonna come right through my Tether Pro cable, and it will show up right here in Lightroom. Now the cool thing is, it's already formatted, it's already got borders and it's already been saturated and all this stuff that I've automated in Lightroom. So I can go over here to the slideshow module and then what I can do is hit play and now I have this set up so that it's just going to repeat anything that's going on. So what I'll do is, now I'm gonna go back there and this is the really cool part. So now I'm in the back here and I'm gonna give a crazy smile. <laughs> And so I've got that picture, and then Matt maybe come in here, and we'll do a shot together, and we will, what Okay, so we've got that crazy picture, and you can see that as I'm shooting, these are coming in, and there they are. So those are my pictures, and everything is automated, and as you're adding new pictures, they're just going to keep coming in, and if the party is having a lot of fun and people aren't in there, it'll just keep looping, and so as you add more pictures, they'll have new pictures showing up, and you can really use this at a wedding or an event uh, because normally if you have a lot of people, you don't want to have a small screen like this and a laptop. What we'd do is we'd hook that up to perhaps a large screen TV or a video projector and you could have like a 10 foot screen with all of these pictures, which means if you're working at an event, a corporate event or something, or maybe at the end of a show, you're shooting a bunch of pictures, you can use the same principle without the photo booth to really do some spectacular things and even increase sales if you're a wedding photographer and all has to do with the automation in Lightroom. But that's not for this episode. That's what I'm gonna do in next, the next episode of Exploring Photography. And I'll show you all that automation and the presets and how you can really save yourself a lot of time and do some really fun things. And we are gonna hook it up to a larger screen and show you how that works. But for this episode, that's how a photo booth works. Get a camera, get a flash, get a couple of foam board uh, boards, tape them together, get a Pocket Wizard Plus 3 and just go to town. You're gonna have a lot of fun. And next time we're gonna talk about the Lightroom stuff. Make sure you don't miss that. And the best way not to miss it is to subscribe to Adorama TV. So what are you doing? Click the subscribe button right now. It's right here, it's really easy for you. You can just click it right there. There it is. Go ahead and click the button and subscribe. I don't know why you haven't clicked it yet. 
All right, there you go, good. Thank you, thanks for subscribing. All right, I'll see you next time right here on Adorama TV. Unfortunately, my laptop has crashed and this isn't working, so we'll start over. <laughs> Boom. Wah, wah. <laughs> Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.